Want a canopy fit out that's going to make all your mates jealous? Come check out what we've done in the back of this CHOP 200 with our Enerdrive Lithium. Hi guys, Andrew here from Accelerate. Just going to run you through a epic canopy build we've just finished off. Um, so this here we've got a CHOP 200. It's been chopped by Creative Conversions. And um, then it went to Norworld to get the tray, all the fridge slide fitted, all the rest of it. It went to TJM, got all that stuff, all the bar work and everything done, roof rack. And then it's come to us to get the canopy fit out. Oh, sorry, and it also went to Just Autos and now it's got some serious power and really sweet exhaust. So then we got it to fit out the canopy. Now the customer's pretty much given us a layout of what they wanted and um, we've just followed that. So yep, this is a pretty well-worn travel path, but we'll check it out. So the girls have made me get up in here to give you the rundown on everything that's going on. So let's do some stretching. So that's our, um, that's just a USB and cigarette socket, obviously for charging phones, stuff like that. Um, that's all, everything here is pretty much wired to the Enerdrive BTEC. So all of this is auxiliary power. So obviously we can draw as much as we want off it and the vehicle will still start. So we'll run through, that's our just accessory sockets. The next thing, the Enerdrive gauge, that's an EPRO. So it tells us everything that's going on in the battery. Um, that'll give us a constant readout percentage. You can actually go through and program it to shut things down. But the, the main thing it does is power in, power out, and just gives us an indication of the percentage left. I should mention this battery also is a Bluetooth battery. So it'll also give you a, um, a full readout on your phone displaying from the battery. Um, the next thing, this Enerdrive green thing here, that is our inverter on and off. So if we want to turn the inverter on, she's on. So basically now we've got 240 power down at the GPO, and that's coming from the BTEC battery by this inverter behind me. Um, 2000 watt inverter, so that'll run pretty much anything you can throw at it, microwaves, inductive cooktops and so on. Um, that's just our fridge output, and that's a spare. I don't know what for, just in case he wants to plug something else in. So that's, that's two there. These here are manual reset circuit breakers. So we've fitted these, they're pretty much everything in and out. The beauty of these is, number one, if you have a problem and it trips, you can just reset it. And number two, if you do want to isolate a circuit at any time, you can literally just flick it and it's turned off. So it's more like a house style circuit breaker. So it makes, I'm probably upsetting something there. So it makes the system a lot easier to deal with out on the road. And, um, and, and just automatic resetting if there's any problems. Uh, up here, that's just for our Trapper Buddy. Um, that's a really cool little 12 volt oven. I think all anybody uses them for is pies and pockets and things, but yeah, they're really cool. Flick it on while you're driving and uh, you'll probably notice now, you'll smell, smell these canopies go past and they smell like a bakery, they're awesome. So it just ticks away and that's this lead. It's the way the Norwell do it, which is a brilliant idea. It's all on runners and movable. So once he works out his setup in here, he can mount it wherever and we've given him plenty of leads so it can go down the back or up the front or whatever wants to happen there. DC-DC charger, pretty self-explanatory. We're also using this as a solar regulator. So at the moment we're putting 8.3 amps in from the solar panel out the front. I think it's 150 or 160 watt panel we've fitted there. Um, so that's going into this and also the alternator charge goes into this straight from here down to the DC, down to the BTEC battery. So this really is a thing that does most of the work charging the battery while we're on the road. Um, we've also got an AC charger here with just a lead. Um, if he does need to plug into 240 for any reason, say he's at a caravan park and it's been cloudy for ages, then this will just plug that in and that'll charge the battery up. That's a 40 amp charger, so that'll um, definitely do the job. Circuit breaker for, sorry, fuse, busman fuse for the inverter. And down here is just the shunt and that just runs the EPRO. So everything from the battery pretty much goes through this and that's how it monitors the current flow and gives you all your percentages and so on. So the lights, we've fitted hardcore lights. I think we've fitted the metery up on the door and then the 50 centimeter one on the inside. They're dimmable and they're dual color. So they'll do the orange insect proof, or in, low insect lights, and also a bright white light for cooking and so on. So they've let me out now so I can show you the inverter. Um, 2000 watt inverter. So this is switched on from the other side um, and basically what it does is give us output on both sides through these GPOs. Now that's being the fact that we've got a 200 BTEC lithium battery, we've got a 2000 watt inverter that'll give us the ability to run microwaves, um, most coffee machines and inductive cooktops which is pretty much where everybody wants to go at the moment. So that's on both sides so it sort of gives you flexibility 
to cook on both sides, or obviously we could use this, which are, are probably charging cordless tools, things like that. Um, so yeah, useful on this side. We've also given him another output over here. Again, if you want to run a second fridge, so that's quite possible, you can smack a second fridge here, and then we've got USBs and cigarette socket output here so that you can charge your fridges and so on from this side. So very flexible, pretty much you can work from both sides and whatever he sort of decides to stick in here, he should have an outlet ready to go. The next thing we've done is down in here, you're probably not even gonna be able to see it. Um, down in here, we've got a TJM air compressor. So that's all wired up, tucked away in there quite neatly. All right, so the front here obviously got a pretty cool look to it. So the main thing we've fitted is we've got two of the Livid Hype Drive Mark IIs. These things are awesome, look great on a black bar. And um, they're one of the few lights we've found that actually fit on one of these TJM bars. They've got a really shallow thing, uh, really shallow mount to them. So it's hard to find something that mounts and these Hype Drives look awesome. Up there, we've fitted one of the steady light bars with the daytime running lights. Um, again, looks perfect. It's great up there. We're using the steady mounts onto the Rhino backbone and it sits perfectly. And then on top of that, we've got the Enerdrive solar panel. I think it's running nine amps at the moment. So happy days, it's really doing its job. All right, so down the back here, look, the camera's a bit of a compromise. That's not final. We'll just run with that until we decide where we're gonna mount it. I think he's banged his head on the ladder a few times, so we might change something there. That'll get us going and work out where it is. The car's only got 400 kilometers on it, so we'll let the owner take it for a good run and decide what we want to do with that camera. Um, down here is obviously our towing setup, so we've got stability control, charging lithium in the van, uh, 12 pin plug, and was a cable for the camera, safety day of camera on the van, um, and big Just Autos exhaust. So here we are inside the car. There's a few things going on in here, but most of it's pretty well hidden, so I'll give you a rundown. Um, first up, we got the Safety Dave screen. With the Vanny purchase came the screen that's got a dual input. We might actually run a four input screen that breaks it up, but we'll run this at the moment. We've got one camera on the back of the canopy, and then we've got the other one to that was a lead down the back that we showed you. Um, all you do to flick between the two cameras is just flick the V1, V2 button. And so at all times you can check the, if you've got your van on the back, you can check the front of the van, or without the van, you've got full vision. I don't know if any of you have driven these things with the big canopy on the back, but it's pretty hard to see even with the MSA mirrors. Uh, moving along, so the UHF, it's got one of the new XRS ones that we're all using. Um, we've mounted the just a little switch blank down here, like an RJ45 pass-through. So that means when he's not using it, he doesn't have to put up with it. He can just unclip it or clip it in and away you go. So if you want to watch any of our other videos on Canopy installs, check out this playlist. YouTube wants you to watch this one down here. And if you've got any comments, put them below.